Chapter 1 Grandpa, you're not serious about this matter, tell me. Ravane said confusedly. I am serious, sweetheart, he responded calmly. Wearily, he sat down in the chair in front of its table. He really didn't its desire to marry can be believed he is his friend's grandson. But, Grandpa, I just can't marry a guy I don't mahal, he still protested. You will learn to love Neptali, Ravane. He is a charming and lovable guy. Responsible as well, it was full of confident promises. You're impossible. He stood up and continued went out of the library. Damn her grandfather for trying to manipulate her life. Especially yet, and she knows that she has a boyfriend. He headed for the garage. Just going he at his friend Mina's house, after all, it's Sunday and the bookstore is closed belonging to them and their other friend. It is necessary he released the annoyance from his chest. He loves his grandfather too much Bartolo to harbor a grudge against it. This who stood by his parents since his parents die in an accident. Even once it did not interfere with those his decision or desire in life. So wondering when he ordered her to get married to a man he didn't even know. Is Grandpa Bartolo serious about that? Asked Mina to him after he told the story Grandfather wanted. It was placed on the coffee table the two glasses of juice. I don't know, Mina. He reached for a glass and split its contents in half. Why don't you try and talk it out with him? I've tried, but I don't want to listen, he said exasperatedly. No. He said I already have a boyfriend. Then, he will force me to marry a man nor have I seen in all my life. What could be his reason? I'm aware. He breathed a sigh of relief after. It seems to have thought too. Do not know. But the best advice I can give you is to follow what's in your heart. That is what you follow. Thank you, friend. It's nothing. What are friends for, anyway? The cordless phone that was there rang. It answered that first. Their friendly called. This is their other partner. At the bookstore. The three of them said they'll meet at Rockwell. Come on, let's go with Lita shopping. So that you can get rid of the you're making trouble, Mina said to him. I hope Grandpa Bartolo never opens that topic again. I was really disgusted by that. Stand up him and followed it. What the hell are you talking about? Anger that Neptali shouted to her grandfather Fortunato. You heard me right. I'm asking you to marry Bartolo Arboleta's granddaughter. Bartolo is my friend for the company's sake. Iho, do it. It can be explained in detail. You're talking about saving the company at my expense? He couldn't believe it. Laugh he is now. You're out of your mind. Grandpa, maybe I'm out of my mind. But this is the best options. Can't you see how it favors us? No. I can't give up, you ask, he said sharply. Then just watch the company slump. His voice also rose. The company is the only legacy I can leave you, son. But when not you followed my request, the all of this, it said. I don't want when. I have disappeared from the world. I will leave you more even harder than a mouse. I know how it is being poor. I don't want you to experience that. I am alone sparing you from misery. How can you be talking about that if you're throwing me into the furnace of another one? He just shook his head. Besides, I can work double time to save the company. Huh, you're thinking of doing a miracle nor there are almost no investments coming in. Every lending company I haven't yet talkers also don't want to give appointment with me. The collapse of the company is widespread. That was the time Bartolo approached me and volunteered to give help. But there is a condition he that I marry his grandson? Tell me, it's him that desperate to look for a guy who is willing marry his granddaughter? Ugly for sure. AM, am I right? It shook its head. Ravane is a beautiful woman. Any man would want to be her boyfriend. So, why do you need to look for one? You are friends with the man who is going to marry his. It shook its head. This conversation is leading us. Nowhere. Think about it, Neptali. If listen to what I'm saying, you're going to save the company. Or you can just watch it crumble. Mine that can no longer be opened. He asked. Next week we'll be here, Fortunato and his grandson. For they say you and Neptali know each other. Grandpa, are we back to that topic again? I'm just telling you not to surprised. They shouldn't come here anymore because I'm not going to marry his grandson and be miserable for the rest of my life. Not me agree, Grandpa, he explained. And besides, there's Alex, what? Just a small employee of our company? 
I'm telling you, grandchild, when he is an opportunist. Why are you sending? To that man, how can you talk about him like that when you don't even know him? I don't need to socialize any more him to know his behavior. When I just look at him, I know that Alex has a bad attitude and too much. The friend's grandson is kind and respectable you? You're being unfair, grandpa. As long as Fortune comes here unwillingly whether you like it or not, it finally said. Without saying goodbye, he abandoned her and proceeded to his room. His is undulating chest filled with suppressed irritation. He didn't quite figure out why the desire is just that of her grandfather to get her married in Neptali that's in Osencho. He knew from the beginning that it was not that this vote goes to Alex for him, but it just keeps quiet and doesn't give a damn. What a comment there must be a reason why it does so that's now. He is like a puppet that it wants just follow everything it says. Whatever it says is vandalism to Alex, he won't listen to it. Visible, he is the boyfriend's hard work for advance. Why can't that be seen by his grandfather? It seems to be getting purr this now. His brain felt like it was going to explode at the thought about what Abuelo wants to happen. If in next week we'll go to their house, his friend and his grandson, he would make sure. He is not there. He will leave. He quickly took up his traveling bag. He filled it with the necessities, his clothes. While doing that was thinking him where he can go. He had to show his grandfather that it will not easily make him follow as something he knew was wrong. What does he expect tomorrow in the company of someone he doesn't love and never has seen? He doesn't want to sacrifice this future and happiness. Ravain watches the old couple who despite their age are remained sweet to each other. How she wished that her own love life would be as sweet as the old couple's. But how that will happen if he agrees marry the man of her grandfather's choice. I thought there was a slight precipitation rebellion in his brain. If allowed he ruled his life it wouldn't be miserable if just in case. He will suffer when coincidentally. He sighed and then stood up. He decided to head to the bar of the resort he went. During his few days stay in Porta Galera is only focused on one thing his brain. He doesn't want to get married to man directed by his grandfather. Understandable, maybe it's him. When he arrived at the bar, almost everyone was stunned men's attention to her. But he didn't pay attention to that. He approached the bar and ordered a drink. Margarita, please. The bartender approached him to hand over the after his order. He handed over a glass of drink. Ma'am, my boss is giving it to me. Taught this is a handsome man sitting not away from his place. Just raised it, he took the glass of wine the man gave him. He stood up and approached him. Hi, there. It greeted with a smile. It revealed the hand. I'm Mark. And you are? Ravain, he replied sparingly. He admits that he is handsome, but that this investment is not his type. One more. He went there to forget the his concerns. He talked to him. Constantly, he only responds with a nod, a shake, or a smile. When it may realize that it has nothing to gain from him apart from friendship, said goodbye that it will be later. He quietly sipped the wine he had in, he ordered while looking around the bar. Some other men tried to get to know him, but she just strategically shoved them away. But once he turned around at the entrance of the bar, he spotted the handsome man. Handsome man coming in. The man was tall, maybe a little over six feet. Because of what he's wearing, the muscles in its chest are tight. Follows that the fabric of his clothes clings to the muscular man its body. He could see the fine fur steaming on the open side of the polo this. The wind also slightly blows the its wavy hair. More added, that's the charisma it has. He could not take his eyes off these red lips as if they were delicious kiss his lips were thin but sensually formed. It stands out among all the men present carrying is full of confidence it to itself. He scolded himself for those thoughts. He turned his gaze to the bar again and continued drinking. But still not he can stop himself from time to time glanced in the direction of the man who provoked in his interest. He thinks that it's pretty dark there. Because it's easy it is obvious that he is looking around here. He didn't know how many shots he had of margaritas. She wasn't keeping count anyway. Add to that the distraction in his mind. Because of that man. When he looked back at it, he saw that this woman is talking to someone. He didn't know if what motivated him to want to get rid of that girl in front of it. He just finished his drink before stand up a certain direction is his feet headed for, the table occupied by men. Hi there. He sat in the empty seat. May I join you? 
Is there anything else we can do? Eh, you're sitting over there? Plain language of the woman talking this. He ignored it. He thought of good subject that he can open and will arouse a man's interest. Started, he asked here. It didn't take long they talk easily. The woman seemed to notice that he dominates the conversation. Annoyed it left and said goodbye to them both. Just laughed him in its behavior. So, you're amused by the prank you created, huh? The man said smiling. Nah, I'm not just amused. I'm overjoyed by it. He even laughed out loud to show off. His pleasure. He also laughed a little at what he said. So what's your name, lady? It would be more exciting if we just meet and never know each other's name. What do you think, mister? He shrugged his shoulders. Okay, what is being done you here if I have a question? I came here to have some fun. A night of fun, he said and followed it with a soft laugh. Whoa, it recedes slightly. What do you do? You mean by that? I don't know. Maybe you can tell me, he said he. He didn't know what to get into. His mind to behave like that. They talked. He ordered again margarita. Would you mind taking a walk with me? Here. It grabbed his hand that was in tabletop. High voltage hissed quickly of electricity in every fiber of his meat. The heat coming from its hand is evokes some emotion in him. The wine has warmed the temperature of his body. It went even higher raising their hands. S, sure, he answered. It supports him. Holding hands, they walked on the beach. It's beautiful look at the stars in the sky. The noise of the waves accompanies the gentle they walk. Perhaps felt he was cold, so he walked with him. Now, the live wire seems to be wrapped in his shoulder. He doesn't even feel it anymore, the coldness of the air due to the heat brought by its arm. They must have been carrying it for a long time and of the margarita he drank, he was barely dizzy. If not for its timely maintenance, maybe he fell into the sand. Careful, sweetie, it said. He became even weaker due to the effect of it did. His knees were weak. It seems like they can't support it anymore, his weight. He slowly, slowly slid into its grip and sat down in the sand. Are you all right? He asked worriedly. Yes, I, I'm okay, he said. I just feel dizzy. Maybe I should take you to your cottage. But I can't seem to stand up yet and walk, he said weakly. That's no problem, sweetie. Let me take care of that. Before he could predict what he would do, he stuck with it. He even screamed of surprise. He also clings tightly to its neck carried by the feeling of being pregnant. The attraction felt increased even more he for this. It seems to absorb everything his strength in that simple proximity of their bodies. Where will I take you now? It asked when in arms even he was confused by this question. That he just wanted to sleep, but also want. He took advantage of the opportunity to meet it still even more, and the possibility is greater that was their last meeting. Why don't we try your place, he said. She made sure that her voice sounded sexy. Again, he doesn't know where the bad idea. He saw her swallow. Or just drop me off to heaven, he whispered. It swallowed one after the other. She too was surprised by her self audacity. Even if he is shy, alcohol helped him so that he was not begged to say what is in the will. He, even if she was doing the wrong thing, it felt that way damn right that moment. Definitely she wasn't holding back. She wanted to know more, to feel more. If whatever the consequences of what he does is he put it aside. Even the little voice that cries out of resistance to his will has been drowned of his burning feelings. The only those moments were important to him, his overflowing emotions. He let her where she wanted him bring.